Why would anybody use anything else? Today we're at the Ceriza Passive House and we are super excited because today, for the first time, we're actually using cork insulation to insulate the exterior and the basement and the roof of our house. And that cork insulation is gonna be an exterior rigid insulation. And I'm super excited to have Nathan from Mr. Insulation, who's our subcontractor on this project, and honestly, pretty much all of our projects, because Nathan knows more about insulation than anybody I know. Cork is actually the bark of a cork tree. So it's an oak tree that has a cork that can be stripped about every seven years. And then they make it into an insulation, or if you're a wine drinker, into cork for your wine. This is a natural product. It's right. not made out of petroleum. So tell me a little bit about, A, the characteristics of this insulation, what you like and what you don't like about it, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about cost, and then we're gonna go around and look at the different spots that we're using it on this house. And we could talk about insulation challenges. So tell me a little bit about this. Sounds good. Yeah, so the cork, like you said, is 100% natural product. Um, it is a great product because it's sustainable. You know, they can, they can repurpose it every seven years. And uh, there are, you know, a lot of challenges behind it. There are some great things about it. Um, one big benefit to it is that you can just cut it with normal wood tools. Okay. So you can use a, a saw, a drill, okay. um, table saw, chop saw, skill saw, whichever you want to actually cut whatever size piece you need. Okay, and then in instead there. of sawdust, it's producing this dust. Correct. Right, and it, you actually figured out a way to use this dust a little bit later on, which we'll get to. Correct, okay. yes, I did. One of the things that's very difficult about the cork is it's very crumbly. As you can see, very little effort is required to break it apart. And so when you're transporting it, carrying it, even just carrying one piece, if you catch it on something, you could snap the whole board very easily. And that, that ruins its ability to be installed uh, very easily. And Correctly. it also makes it so that if you crumble it, now you have gaps in, the, in that material, which is gonna allow convection. So airflow through that material, which is gonna ruin its insulative ability. Correct, just right. like this is a perfect example of what it does. So that's a cross section that you guys cut of a three inch sample. And as you can see, there's a ton of little air pockets in here, which means that we've basically got the ability of air to kind of convect through that, which we don't see on like poly ISO and some of our other materials. Correct. This insulation stops convective heat flow. So that's heat going through air currents. And if it's got a bunch of holes in it, that obviously makes it less effective at stopping convection. Correct. Now, one of the things that I love about this material is, as you said, it's sustainable, but it's actually a natural product. 100% We natural. really don't, they don't really do anything with it except glue it together. Correct. Okay, and one of the things that's super awesome is they're using a non-toxic glue and it's red list free. So we're huge fans of the Living Building Challenge. And we really love the fact that we get to use natural products that don't have any toxins. So basically, you could eat this. I wouldn't recommend eating it, but you could eat this and it would be okay for you. Correct. Okay, and now we have different thicknesses of that material. So why do we have different thicknesses? For different R values, essentially, you can go all the way down to a half an inch. You can use it for different applications, not just insulation. And then you can go as thick as three inches. Three inches is the thickest that they do make or offer. Okay. Um, not a lot of companies. There are multiple companies that offer cork, but most of them don't offer anything thicker than an inch or an inch and a half. Okay. So, so if you needed more insulation, you would just have to stack up multiple layers. You could, technically, yes. And then you're going to be paying more because one inch of insulation costs more than three inches, costs more than three times three what times. three inches. Correct. Yes. Okay. So this is a, f a good product in, in the fact that it's um, natural. It's not going to off gas. It's also totally resistant to water. So even though it's a natural product and it's got carbon, it doesn't mold because of the nature of the material it, it is. Yeah. This is a class B fire rated material. So right. it's not a class A like fiber cement or something like that, but it's much better than some, you know, cellulose, for instance, or, or uh, wood, your house is going to burn before this burns. But we can assume that this is going to be a really good material to use in fire areas on the exteriors. Yes. Okay, as long as it's protected. You can actually use it as your exterior cladding as well. You can okay. use cork as your finished exterior cladding on your home. Okay, so this same material or it's a slightly different material? It's a slightly different process the okay. way they make it. Okay. Um, and they actually have designs into it. So you can actually get just instead of just a plain flat sheet, you can get designs built into the actual cork facade. So where are you using it? Here? So on this house, we're using it in three different places. We're using it on the exterior walls. We're using it on the roof of the house. And then we're also using it in the basement underneath the concrete floor. 
So super low embodied carbon, this project is gonna be have really, really low embodied carbon. We're gonna do those calculations in a future video. Let's go take a look at this on the okay. roof. Sounds good. All right, so we're up on the roof and we're looking at the insulation. Now, this roof has what we call an overframe. In this project, it is actually part of the architectural detail of this project. And you'll see that the overframe actually goes out on these eaves. So it's really a crucial part of the architecture, but it's also a great place for us to put exterior rigid insulation to stop that conduction of energy through the rafters on the house. Now, Nathan's team has already put the cork here. We've got three inches of insulation here, Nathan. Correct. So tell me, was there any challenge to the insulation up on the roof? Uh, there was a little bit of challenge. Um, the biggest challenge is, is of course, the, uh, the dimensions of the court compared to the opening of the sleepers. Okay. So we had to, it's, uh, the opening is a little wider than the actual cork panels and boards themselves. Okay. So we have to rip a strip to fit in the side. The cork is actually not a native product to the United States. Correct. So it's not on the imperial system, <laughs> which is 24 inches on center framing. Correct. These are actually one meter by, by one by half a meter. Correct. So we have about a three inch gap around the panel. So what are you doing? So essentially I'm taking the, uh, the panels and I'm ripping them in the table saw to whatever dimension it needs to be, two and a half, three inches roughly. Okay, so you're actually ripping a little three inch section and then having to shove it in there, which Correct. gives us not only a gap at the edge, but a gap kind of in the middle in of the panel. between the two boards. Okay, and so how are you dealing with that? Because if this was gonna be a normal project where we're not using cork and we're using say poly iso or polystyrene, we would caulk around the perimeter of the foam to keep any convective currents from coming up around the rafters, right? What are you doing here to not use additional materials and to stop that convection around it? So funny that you ask, the powder that you showed earlier that powder I'm gonna to use to backfill all the little holes and the, and the gaps and the joints on the seams of board to board and the seams from the boards to the actual sleepers. So you're not actually using another material. You've figured out that you can use the waste product from the sawing to essentially stop this convective current. So you're basically not adding any costs to the project and you're making a better product just by thinking outside the box. Correct, and I'm recycling a waste product. That's awesome. So we're in the basement of the Cerise Passive House and we're looking at uh, multiple levels. So we already have a big 12 or 14 inch thick structural slab underneath here. And then we have this cork that we've done and you, it looks like about two inches of cork Correct. over the whole floor down here. And then in other parts of the house, we already have a topping slab. So another layer of concrete. Correct. So the cork is really separating the topping slab, which has all the radiant pipes from the structural slab. What that does is it gives us the ability to highly control the temperature of the slab, the topping slab in the house without having to heat up the entire foundation. Now, I see the, the cork here and honestly, it's pretty dirty. Yes. Like it's kind of dirty. And before this shoot, I tried to sweep it. But as you were mentioning earlier, the friable nature of it means that actually sweeping it starts to kind of pull it apart. So tell us a little bit about uh, what it was like to install here and did you have any problems with it? So, I mean, as far as installing here, same concept as uh, installing it on the roof. Okay. Uh, you pretty much, you cut it to, to size and then when you're installing it and trying to get a nice tight fit, when you're pushing to get that tight fit, it is pretty easy to like break off a corner of, okay. of some of the granules. So that is the biggest difficulty. The larger concern about the cork on the floor is when people start walking on it. People, so that's what we're seeing. It's all this little, all this little crumble. Correct. It's from people working on the cork after it was installed and they come on and do whatever needs to be done, extra blocking, framing, wiring, pipe. So I see over here that we have the radiant tubes are actually stapled right into the cork. Correct. Which is great. It makes it super <laughs> awesome for the radiant guys but it means that there's been a lot of traffic on this. Yes. And so you would probably recommend that when we do this in the future, that we put the cork down just before we put the concrete down Correct. or just before we put the radiant pipes down because it just starts to get trashed. Yeah, you want, you want very little traffic. Technically you want no traffic, but that's almost impossible to acquire. Okay. So all in all, based on kind of what you've seen and the benefits of using a natural non-toxic red list free material, that is a little bit more expensive. So we know that it's about 20% uh, more, 30% more expensive than a poly isocyanurate and about two times more expensive than uh, a polystyrene material. Mm -hmm. 
but it's non-toxic and it's not a petroleum product. Correct. So like, would you use this again and how would you do things differently? I would use it again. Um, I prefer stuff that's natural. I like healthy products. I don't want to use anything petroleum based if I can help it. Um, on top of that, I don't have to worry about my health with a product like this. When you, polyisos and polystyrenes, like when you cut that stuff, you need to have a vacuum running to suck up all of the particles because that is toxic particles that right. can get into your lungs very easily. Whereas cork, your body can actually handle it if you do breathe it in. I, I especially love the fact that it can get wet Yes. and it doesn't destroy it. Correct. Like this is pretty much just as good wet as it is dry because it's got a close structure. Mm -hmm. You can also use it sub slab where you can't do that with polyiso. You could do it with polystyrene, but again, polystyrene is a petroleum product. And yep. so I really like this material and the fact that it's a class B, which is much better than any of the other materials. And you know, we've talked a lot about it uh, in the past about Gutex, which is a wood fiber. Yep. You can't use Gutex sub slab. Not in contact. You can, but you'd have to protect it prior. Okay. So there's extra steps that are required, which make it quite a bit more expensive. Okay. And so really for a natural product, dur durable, if you treat it the right way uh, and protect it, this is a pretty dang good product. It's a great product. It's very comparable to like a redwood. Okay. Awesome. If you're interested in learning more about building science, about cork insulation, or about Mr. Insulation, hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.